Hey everyone, today's video is going to be a first impressions, but it's going to be done casual style because it's my holidays and I didn't feel like getting dressed up and looking super pretty and put together for this video. I mean, I will have makeup on, but I want to wear a hoodie because it's actually freezing cold in Auckland right now. The product that we're going to be trying out today is one that I'm really excited for, and it's the Medicube Plus Red Cushion. I believe that's its full name. Now, what this product is supposed to be is this is supposed to be a full coverage BB cream, and now I know Shannon has already done the video on this, um, but I am a lot paler than she is and I also have a different skin type and a kind of impression on products because I personally like a full coverage sometimes but I would prefer it to give me a really nice medium coverage. My issue is that products for some reason just do not last on my skin no matter if I set them or use setting sprays I just feel like they like wear off my skin like nobody's business so I thought that this would be a good product to try. Now I have watched Shannon's video but I haven't really watched it in detail like I genuinely can't remember whether it lasted the full length of time or if it didn't I just know that she said it was really good coverage so I went and picked this up in a bunch of other Korean beauty if you haven't seen that haul I will leave it linked off down below so that you can check it out I have also done one or two other Korean beauty first impressions I'm gonna have a Korean beauty playlist so if you guys want to go check that out I'll leave it linked off down below majority of the books is in Korean obviously but there is a little bit of English down the bottom and it just says how to use use a provided puff to apply evenly on the skin there's not a lot more to it. It does also have cautions but they're just your general cautions like if it burns take it off, if it keeps burning go see a doctor, all that sort of thing. This product is SPF 50 which is awesome because we always need to make sure that we have SPF on our skin because the sun is so strong we should always have it on our faces and I'm really bad for that during the winter time. In the summer time I'm amazing but in the winter I always forget to put SPF on so wearing something like this every day would be awesome. This product comes in two shades. I've got the lighter one of the two. I have shade number 21. And now the one thing that I wanted you guys to know and I didn't realise this is that this retails at $30 US which is about 40, 45 New Zealand which is really really expensive for a cushion in Korea. I don't know if this makes it a luxury cushion or if it's just an expensive one, but it is quite pricey, so do keep that in mind. And that's why I wanted to try it out for you guys so that you would know if it was good or not. There are also a bunch of other cheaper cushions, but this is probably one of the only ones that I've seen that has like high, high, high coverage. All right, when you open the product up, you've got your mirror and you've got your puff. I will try to use this. The only thing, I like the um, puff itself, but this little ribbon, I don't know whether I'm supposed to put two fingers, three fingers, and it just flies off. So I'll try to use the puff. If not, I do have a wet beauty blender ready. So that's what it looks like. Hopefully you can see it's kind of just like a sponge. I guess the product must be sitting underneath. It's a little bit different to the traditional cushions that I've used. But anyway, I'm going to do this side of the face first. And then I'm going to do this side. We'll do half and half so we can compare. I'm not actually going to use the puff that comes with it because I can't get my fingers in there and it's driving me crazy. So I am just going to use a beauty blender. So let's just do two splodges in the product and we'll see how far that goes. Alright. <laughs> that was more than I expected right off the bat anyway. That nearly completely covered up that hyperpigmentation. It has a really nice, um, fresh scent to it. It smells, like, not strongly scented, but it does have a scent to it. Um, I can't smell it once I've finished, like, bouncing it into my skin, though. The colour is really nice. I would say that it's pretty much perfect. It might be, like, a tiny bit dark, um, but all of my foundations are usually this colour, so I'm used to them being a smidgen dark. Um, hopefully it doesn't oxidise, then it wouldn't be perfect, but we'll see. Alright, well damn, that looks really good. I don't know about you guys, but um, I personally would stop at this coverage. But you can see how red and blotchy my face is normally compared to that. For the sake of the video to see if it will build anymore, I'm just going to take a little bit more. And I'm just going to bounce that sort of over my cheek where I've got that hyperpigmentation. I've never really had a product cover it before, so I think it's kind of like uncoverable, but... Just gonna pop a little bit more down here as well. Yeah, that's this to me is I would say this is medium slash full. For me, this is as full as I ever really want. And I love the fact that it has got that glow to it. Hopefully you guys can see. It does have a little bit of radiance, which I think is really pretty. I really like this. This is going on really nicely. It feels so thin, like as thin as any other normal cushion, like I can't feel it on my face at all. It feels like my face is just moisturized, which is awesome. And so far it's not oxidizing, so this is looking to be a really awesome product for what I want. Alright, let's do the other half of the face. I'll start down here with this big whopper. <laughs> Do 
Jeez Louise. So that really did do a great job of covering that with, with just a foundation, you know. I mean, normally I'd probably use a, if I wanted to have fuller coverage, I would use like a green concealer underneath or like a concealer on top. But for everyday wear, like that's not going to bother me, you know. It is active, so that's why it's so dark. Like it's still a pimple, it's not a scar yet, but I'm not mad at that level of coverage. Okay guys, I am loving this on my skin. It looks so beautiful. The radiance is amazing. I've just got a little bit on the tip of my blender. I'm just going to pop some there and I'm going to pop some on these freckles because they just won't go away. I'm just going to lightly dab it over. Don't think that pimple's going to go completely because it is really dark. The colour match is actually pretty much perfect. The only issue is, is that of course if you have a deep skin tone you're obviously not going to get a colour match. But I think that's kind of typical for most Korean beauty but that's such a shame. So obviously that would not work for you. I think the second shade is sort of more of like a medium to light beige as opposed to like a fair to light colour. But I know that you can kind of match them possibly a little bit either way. I'll make it a little bit dark, a little bit lighter with powders and stuff, but it won't go very dark at all. All right guys, it's 9.45 and I'm gonna go ahead and just apply a little bit of makeup. I'm not really gonna do a full look. Like I said, I'm just staying home today, but I may as well try and look semi put together. I am gonna be setting the face with a powder, so I'll let you know how that goes. So I'll see you guys in a little bit. All right guys, so it's quarter past 10. It's been about 30 minutes since I last spoke to you. And I have a few things that I wanted to let you know after applying the rest of my makeup. Everything went on really, really nicely, but I did actually want to tell you that the Medicube actually covered my dermatitis really, really well. Like, it didn't cling to it, it didn't accentuate it, whereas the moment that I put the concealer on, I actually realized that I still had dermatitis, if that makes sense. Like, the Medicube went over it flawlessly, and I couldn't actually see it, whereas some products will really cling to it, and the Medicube didn't. So I'm guessing that it would be good for dry skin, but we'll have to see if the day goes on if it does start to cling to any dry patches. I did just want to say that it does, um, my skin just looks a little bit too dry right now. I don't know if that powder was the best fit for this. I will try it again with a hydrating primer. And if I have any updates on the product, I will let you know in the down bar because you won't be seeing this video for a little bit after I film it. So I will let you know if I um, have any updates on like better ways to wear it or anything like that. I don't really have anything else to say. The coverage is still amazing. It does just look a little bit more dry and cakey. Um, I don't know if that's the Medicube's fault or the powder's fault, probably more the powder's fault, but it still makes me wonder if next time I wear this I should wear a more hydrating primer. I haven't used a setting spray, whereas I normally would just to break down the powdery feel, because I don't want to prolong the wear longer than it would actually wear. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and get on with my lazy day, and I'll see you guys in a little bit. Hey guys, so right now it is 1.45, which means the makeup has been on for about 4 hours, and as far as I can see it looks exactly the same. I mean, I've been lying down so I'm not like physically exerting myself or anything, but it looks really really good. It kind of looks like it's wearing off a little bit on my nose, um, but other than that it looks pretty much perfect. I'll come up close because the nose actually looks a little bit funny. It's probably because I didn't use a primer, but I'll show you anyway, but still got all of the coverage everywhere else, I think. Might have rubbed off a little bit on my chin, but my hoodie keeps you know, riding up and stuff, but I'll show you the nose, because it looks a little bit weird. I don't know if you guys can see. It's not really focusing very well, but just sort of around here, it's coming off a little bit weirdly, but everywhere else, it's looking pretty good. I mean, four hours so far, so good. I'm really, really liking it. You can't see this from a distance, so... I don't think the nose is a really big problem. I will keep an eye on it though and we'll just remember that that's the part that started to wear first. So yeah, after four hours we're still looking good so I'll see you in a few more. Alright guys, it is 4.45 which means that this foundation has been on my face for seven hours. Haven't even had a look at it, I've been trying to like not look at it until I come to do updates if that makes sense. Um, it looks pretty good. I am really really impressed with this you guys. Apart, oh sorry my piercing's crooked. Apart from my nose looking funny, which by the way it hasn't really changed much since the last update, I think it looks really really good. 
I'm getting a little bit of redness breaking through on my chin, but this dude here is still really well concealed, um, considering all I used to conceal him was the cushion. I haven't lost any coverage, maybe a tiny, tiny bit down here. This is normally where I lose coverage first, and it's still looking pretty good. Actually, I think it might have lost a little bit, but I'm still happy with the way that it's looking. In terms of oil breakthrough or shine, I am seeing a little bit of shine on the forehead. It's not oily, if anything, it's like a little bit of a luminosity. I almost prefer the way that it looks now as opposed to the way it did when I first applied it. In the first clip, I said it looked cakey, but I think that was the wrong word. It just looked a little bit dry. Um, it does not look cakey at all. It looks super duper lightweight and um, really, really beautiful. So seven hours of wear to me is really, really great about looking like this because I usually wear my makeup for around about seven or eight hours. I will definitely 100% be using this again. And like I said earlier, don't forget to check down below because if I try anything new and find that it works better or worse, I will let you know. Um, so if you buy this, you would know how it wears, like if I use a thick moisturiser, if I use a primer, I'll put all of that info down below for you guys. I'm going to be ending the video here at 7 hours because I feel like that is a good test of how long the foundation is wearing. I wanted to thank you guys so much for watching. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and if you have tried this product before, please let me know what you think of it down below because I would love to know if you guys have enjoyed it as much as I have today. Once again, thank you so much for watching. I love you guys and I'll see you all in my next video. Bye!